morning fellow utopians. I'm Lynn and here's what's happening on the farm today. Lammies! <laughs> wakey wakey! That's a big bunch of them anyway. Guess which one is Maisie? If the weather's nice, we'll be able to start opening the gates. Put into farming? Or once you put into life is what you get out of it. Another group headed towards the coveralls. Okay, we're going to head to the back and see how well the Suffolk lambs in the little ones who are causing us such grief are doing on the bottle holder today. Okay, lovely, let's go. Chewy's lamb. Uh, right. Can you zoom in on yeah. Chewy's lamb? I could, but I don't like to. I find the zoom is uh, it's hard to get in the zoom, but then you have to get out of the zoom. Okay, Lynn's going to just zoom in because it's kind of cute. Sure. He's on the bale now. Fine. No, he's not. There they are. Look at Chewy's little lamb back there. She kind of blends in. Oh, I about the one on the bale. That's Chewy's too. The brown one. No, that, the one on the bale, where is it? Well, we can't see her very well, but that's uh, Toonie's lamb. Chewy's the one with no ears. Yeah. Has a spotted face. There you go. Back to Arnie. Got your pink coveralls back on, eh? Huh? This is what I've been working on. Trying to get the bottle babies, the young ones, on the feeder all by themselves. All by herself. Come on, we're going to win. She's a one team farmer. It's a big bunch of them anyway. Pretty impressive, I think. Now we'll get the ones that are fussy. Who are you? So now we just have to go in there and find the ones that didn't come up. And the ones who didn't get it, like this one. But that little white one gets it. 
Yeah. But you got three little white ones, eh? Yeah, but she's the one that mainly takes it. See that lamb in the bale over there? Yeah. That Hannibal lamb? Yeah. Uh, he's running around the walkway here all night. He's the triplet. Yeah, he's running the whole barn. Honestly, Lynn's always leaving the gate open. Now we're going to figure this out. Yeah, Lynn just leaves the gate open. She just walks away like nothing's happening. Oh, you guys, don't go in danger. Oh well, I'll have to clean this up. It looks like we've got some sheep outside today. The Suffolk lambs. Because it's actually a nice day today. I gotta go feed my bottle babies. And now that we took the wall down, it means that Maisie has to come to the bottle holder. And she's never had a bottle holder before. She wasn't too sure about it, but once we showed her that there was milk in there, she got on. And you can see the difference in age there, eh? Guess which one is Maisie? Okay, as we leave this cover off, you can see all the ewes are eating at the trough here. Most of the lambs, except for those like, I'm guessing, Magnum here. Hi, sweetheart, are at the drinker, but all the rest of the lambs are enjoying their food, and there's a few that are enjoying their freedom outside, too. Hi. I think we're going to call you Magnum. You're very pretty. Yes, you are. Is this good, you guys? Is this a nice spot for you ones? Can you go outside too? That looks pretty fun. Same thing on the other side, except we only have the two feeders over here. Arnie's waiting for that back creep area to be emptied out by all the lambs, and then he'll bring those over to the front too, and it'll be the same setup. Hi. Hi, little mister and Mac. You guys always hang around together. You do. You're like best of buddies. Best of buddies. Look at how cute. Oh my goodness. Mac, see how you're pushy and Mr. waits his turn. Yeah. So now, if the weather's nice, we'll be able to start opening the gates and letting one group out at a time. Today is obviously Suffolk Day. Here's the enlarged Suffolk group. Just one more load to come over. They look pretty happy. No creep pen yet. Yeah, they should have a creep pen. Well, you got a be beautiful day for doing it today. I think it's going to rain the next two days. See, the young lads have all are all at the mineral feeder. I think they see what I'm doing, so they want to go check it out. And that's how they learn where they get their salt and mineral. And because they're sheep, when one does it, they all do it. 
So today Arnie's gonna finish cleaning the other side out and the goal is to have the dorset lambs starting on the other side now. This little girl is sporting a lot of baby fluff. Door suffix aren't usually fluffy, but occasionally you get one that's born with a lot of fluff like her. It seems like always the fluffy ones are the friendly ones, or the ones with attitude. We're actually, uh, we're actually just clean, just cleaned out this barn, so the entire barn is cleaned out now, and uh, we're just getting ready to put the dorsets in here. So I, when I bring the lambs in, I always make sure the whole barn's clean. So you can see that this is a dirt floor. And uh, what basically in this floor is, is a half inch gravel. And there it is right there, you can see it. Right there. It packs down quite hard actually. This is all took out with a skid sear. And everybody knows the skid sear can do quite a bit of damage on the floor. Uh, but you can see there's not much damage done. I mean, it's not perfect. But it really does the job quite easily, and it's uh, it's very cost affection affection. It's very cheap in the cost. So if you want to keep your cost down, because this building here is probably uh, this building here is 50 feet uh, wide and 140 feet long. To cement that floor down, and you'd have to put a cement curb on that wall probably. I mean, you're talking probably, I don't know, $20,000, $30,000. It's a lot of money to spend on the floor. But it is true, once you have the cement floor down, it's down forever. But it is a big cost. We didn't put the cement floors down. We kept it simple, cheap. Uh, I shouldn't use the word cheap, but we kept it down where it was practical. And people always ask me, how do you keep the dirt away from the wall? Well, you can see right there, there's not much dirt on that wall. That wall is actually quite clean. So that's not a problem. And we just put a little bit of a hog panel on, uh, on that wall right here, just to, uh, just to keep the sheep away from the curtains. And uh, those, when I install those curtains that go up and down, for this whole barn, that curtain cost me $3,000. So it cost me $1,500 per side, which was actually, to me, extremely doable i mean now we do run them we do run the curtain manually with a winch but it works very easy it wor it wor it's very slick it works this is a split curtain half and half so i know we talked about this before i just thought i'd point it out while the barn was cleaned out and these feeders right here to my knowledge uh these feeders i'm the only person that has these feeders so I designed these feeders myself. The feeder is 22 inches high. So it looks quite high, but actually it's not that high when you get down a bedding pack, a four inch bedding pack. Uh, Suffolk's are quite large sheep. They can eat in that quite e easily. I didn't want my sheep to eat into a hole. I wanted them to eat flat out like a table. So that, I didn't want them eating out where, they, where their throats are, in the, are always in, down in the bottom eating. So that's the way we made it. The only thing that would have changed in these feeders are the spacings on the bars. They're seven inches. I would go to eight to eight and a half inch spacings. Seven inches is, you wouldn't want them any narrower. People would say, why do you want the bars? We tried it without the bars, 
had a lot of hay loss, pulling hay out, pulling a lot of hay out. Because we don't feed TMR, we feed round bales. So when you grab onto a long bunch of hay, they want to pull it out. There was hay being pulled out all over the place. We didn't like that. So we put the bars in. The bars are in a little bit on an angle. It's to keep the lambs from jumping in. That will stop lambs from jumping in quite, quite, quite a bit. So these feeders are eight feet long. They're all made individually. And each one should bolt together with one bolt right there. It just holds them together. That's all that's holding it together. Steel bottom, it's all made of steel. Again, people will say it's expensive, but wood's not cheap either. And one thing nice about steel, steel is clean. It doesn't carry a lot of diseases, like wood has pores in it. It carries, well, in, in the cattle business, the number one cause for ringworm, I think, was, uh, was caused in the wood, and the ringworm was living in the wood, and that was spreading it on the cattle. So this is all wood, and that's why we went steel. But again, uh, now it's been a few years ago when we installed this, but that whole feeder, steel, and I had a man, I had a man weld it up for me. That whole barn, it's a 120 feet long feeder, eight foot pieces. He made the whole thing for $8,000. To be honest, it sounds like a lot of money, but you're only gonna spend it once and my theory is, if I quit farming, which we are going to quit, I'm going to unbolt these feeders, and I'm going to take them apart, and I'm probably going to sell them. Because I think they can be installed anywhere. And this feed bunk can be moved. So if I don't like the location of the feed bunk, I can move it either way by taking it apart and setting it back up again. And uh, then all the way down the bunk, we put these little pins in here. So we can put panels right across to the wall, and we can divide the pen all up in quarters, eight pens, six pens, whatever we want. So we have these little, these little pins welded all over the place that we can put the gates up. And we uh, put that board in the bottom. See that board in the very bottom there? And that just keeps the lands from being contaminated from one group to another group that we can control the lands. And the lambs love that little haven spot underneath there. They love it. So I just thought I'd talk about that feeder while the barn was cleaned out. And we're just going to line the whole thing with straw right now. Oh, another thing too is the feeder is 30 inches high. And we added that on later on. Because the lambs were actually, when all the ewes were eating off the manger, the lambs would jump on top of the ewes and walk on top, of the, on top of the ewes, and then they would just jump in the manger. That's how they were getting in. They were jumping on top of the mother's back and then jumping in the mangers. And believe me, lambs love that challenge. They want to do it. So that, adding this later on, we welded this a piece of angle iron on. Slit, these just slide in there. See? And it just keeps the lambs out. If I was to do it again, I'd probably just put half-inch rods right down and through here. Two or three half-inch rods and tack them in. And then I wouldn't use the wood at all. But this was an add-on, and that's why it's wood. So that's just the manger. And uh, I'm going to lay this whole thing down with straw. And then I'm going to call Lynn's doing some book work in the house. And me and Lynn are going to move over a group, a group of Dorset lambs today. We're going to this barn. Oh, I'll talk about one more thing. If uh, some people were talking about it on the internet, they asked us why didn't we use those uh, blue feeders for creep feed. What I didn't like about the blue feeders were is the lambs were eating out of the blue feeder, but they're also scratching the feed out all day long with their feet, and their feet were dirty, and the lambs were not eating the grain the way they should be eating it. Yeah, you got to think of, a, of feeding something in a bulk form once a week. You got to think about it. You know when you go to town and you see that little sign that says uh, homemade bakery? And you got to stop. Because fresh baked bread is a die for. Well, when creep feed lays out for a week and old things there, they smell. It's, it, it'll start to pick up the barn smell. 
So I have a lot better luck by putting the creep feed out every day for the lambs, and I find they eat a lot more creep feed. Uh, just keep it fresh, keep it smelling nice, and they'll eat more. It's hard to believe that animals can smell the barn on the feed, but they actually can. Only the way we do it, it's a little anal, a little bit of hard work maybe, but I always have a theory that what you put into farming or what you put into life is what you get out of it. That's my theory, and I think it works quite well. So I'm gonna get on with it, because we want to, it's getting late in the day, and we want to move these sheep today. So I'll talk to you in a few minutes. Okay, Arnie's got the pen all cleaned out, and he's putting in some creek feeders. So we put the dividing wall up now and now the yearling ewes have the back two quarters. The Suffolk new lambs are on one side and the first Dorset group is going to be coming in here shortly. Okay, it's walk across the yard day for the Dorsets, the wild and woolly ones. They want to go out. Okay. Well, you gotta block them. Come on, you guys. That seems to be the funnel, eh? I'll go around this side, eh? <laughs> so this group has some of our famous ones like Mooney. Nice day, isn't it? No, mommy, go on. There was a smoother way, but no, mom, go that way. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Come on, come on. Why are they stopping here? Would have been the better way, but There's just a little puddle there they don't like. There's a, they're not liking that puddle. 
Across you guys. This takes one to go. Come on, you guys, get out of the water. Come on. Pretty good job, except for the water hole. They're gonna really like this. Because this group's been in the barn quite a while. Because we wait till we have 10 before we move them over. And of course, all the yearling ewes are really interested in what's going on now. And then all this excitement has got the suffix on the other side running. leftover grain in those feeders. It's got to be like a year old that the ewes have found it. Come on, go into your pen. Another lamb out of the jug. Well, that's it for another day at Utopia Farms. Uh, I hope you enjoyed yourself. And if you did, please remember to join us again tomorrow. Bye for now.